Hey, t- I saw some tweets with uh, Tony Saragusa, assuming they are all related to the story with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, let me read the tweets, and we'll bring in Goose, uh, of course, the uh, Fox analyst. Uh, Tony uh, has a tweet today, whatever happened to mental toughness? I teach my kids never run from a problem, face it head on. I hope there's more people like they're, uh, out there like me. Uh, quitting is not an option. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. If you've ever said this, please retweet. Let's bring in uh, Tony Saragusa, the NFL on Fox, who joins us now. Goose, what are you trying to say, or what are you saying in those tweets? I just think that, you know, people make more out of words and actions nowadays. You know, everyone has to be politically correct and worried about what they say. Um, as far as, you know, referring back to Richie Incognito with the race uh, Part of it, I think, is totally uncalled for. Do I think Richie Incognito is 100% wrong? Absolutely. But I don't think people out there really understand what a locker room is like. You know, you got to remember you have, you know, these are grown men. This isn't, this isn't a, a school with kids or, um, you know, where people can't, or in, an, in an atmosphere where people can't go and defend themselves. They defend themselves every day. They defend their job every day. They defend their team every day. They defend everything. Um, and it just, you know, when you look at it and reading on Twitter, I mean, I think Twitter is probably the biggest avenue for bullying there is out there. And, and Dan, I mean, I'd, I'd like to, you know, even ha- ask you about it. Uh, you know, ha- do people go and, 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 and leave bullying comments about you on Twitter every day? I mean, I get them every day. Yeah. I don't, I, do you? Yeah. You know, you, you get the guys that go and they bully you and everything like that and, and, and you know, I mean, we're in the business where we're out there a little bit. And, and, and I think, you know, just ignoring the situation sometimes, it sort of goes away. But, but when, Goose, when it's in your face in the locker room. Yeah, but they're I nameless it's, and it's faceless. Some, they're, they're, those are people I don't work next to. They're not teammates. I'm not right. next to them. If if my guys, the Danettes, did that, then then it would be different. These are people that I don't know. And if they want to take a shot, they take a shot. And then, you know, I move on right. with it. Right. This is a teammate uh, but, who's but doing think, this. Right. The, the, the strange thing, you know, listen, you know, they talk about teams being a family. And when you're in the locker room, that's like your home. When you're, when you're a player, and whatever level it might be, that's your home. And it's, uh, you know, things are handled in there and set in there that shouldn't be brought out to the, to the media. Just, and, and plainly because, you know, the media and really the real world, you know, can't handle a lot of those things and a lot of things that happen in that locker room. And I think, you know, I know guys that I've gotten in fist fights with in the locker room. It's never gotten out into the media. And then the next day I'm hugging them and saying, come on, let's go. Let's go play. It's just uh, that's the atmosphere that it is. Um, You know, the strange thing when I I look at, you know, uh, the Incognito Martin deal is, you know, I'm I'm really surprised that no one on the team stood up and said, hey, listen, Richie, this is enough. Now, now Richie has a, a, you know, a a history, you know, of doing things. And I think he's 100 percent wrong. But, you know, it just goes to show me, hey, listen, you know, at some point someone needs to go and stand up for other people. I mean, I've done that a million times on, on the street, in the locker room, whatever. Um, but, you know, everyone, you know, one of the highest rated shows, uh, if everyone remembers, Hard Knocks. And, and on Hard Knocks, I get, you know, rookies, and, and when I played, I don't even know if it's still there, but you have to earn your way in. You know, a lot of teams do it in different ways, whether they don't give guys the emblem on the side of their helmet. You have to wait the team before you get that, or you got to get, you know, uh, food for the veterans. I mean, I had to wash cars after three-a-day practices. I mean, everybody had to work their way in and show that, hey, listen, you're, you're mentally tough, and, and, and you can handle, you know, having thick skin and, and whatever comes your way, and it's not going to bother you and take you out of the game. I mean, you know, and, and I well, think what that— Well, what did Martin do wrong? What did he do wrong? Yes. I'm not referring back to Martin. I, what he did wrong, I think that he should have confronted Incognito. I, I think that so, he should have went up to him and said, what's your problem? Or, 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 or said something to him or, or, or kept it in-house. And, and if it was that bad, you know, go deal with it with the coach. But I think once it got to the media, I think it got blown out of proportion. Well, so we, I think we, that in, go ahead. we talk about the culture that you keep it in house, that he let it out of the house. And I have people, you know, there's players, former players, even people, NFL personnel who are saying you never let it outside of the locker room. So Martin is getting a lot of blame here that he didn't handle it the right way. Incognito That's with the text and the words are wrong. He was trying to bully him, intimidate him. And then some players say, look, 
He's our leader. He's trying to toughen up Jonathan Martin. Right. I, I, you know what? I, it's hard for me to go and comment on exactly what happened between the both of them because I wasn't there. You know, more, more stuff's going to come out, and one guy's going to be wrong, and one guy isn't. But when my, you know, 14-year-old son wakes up and he asks me about this and says, Dad, what happened in this? And I said, well, a guy confronted another guy, and it was going at him, and, and, and one of the guys went and just got up and left. And I, says, I, I said, listen, if somebody ever confronts you and you have a problem with them, you don't ever leave. You go and you stand your ground and you say, listen, man, what's your problem? What's the deal? You know, I'm, I'm looking at this as a father, not just a football player. I think that too many people go and they run to attorneys and they go and run and hide a little bit for, and, and, and kind of handle situations when they, should, when they should go and just make their stand and, 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 and be a man. But don't you think Incognito wanted Martin to do that? Wanted him to get up and leave? No. Yeah, so that's no, to fight him. No. He Either he wanted to run him off or see if he was man enough to stand up to him. Like I said, Dan, I, you know, if I was there, I can give you a better opinion about it. I mean, I can only go by what I know and, and the facts that I know. Yeah. But I'm just saying, hey, listen, this, this, is a, this isn't two kids we're talking about. This isn't two children. This isn't, you know, this isn't, I mean, these are two grown men in the most violent sport there is probably next to MMA. Okay, that they go out there and they fight every week, and they and they're supposedly you know you know teammates. They're on the offensive line. I mean, offensive linemen are are, are they they're never apart. Like you know, anytime, even now when I do games, so offensive linemen always you know where are we going? They all go together. You know, defensive linemen are more individuals than, than offensive linemen, and and these two guys couldn't couldn't get along. I mean, it's got you know, it's 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 a shame that it, that it, that it happened. And, you know, but, it, but it's like, you know, you know, handle your problems. I think out there as a, as, as a person, you know, that, that coaches, I coach young kids in seventh and eighth grade. You know, listen, if you have a problem, stand up for yourself. Don't, don't, don't let somebody go and overtake you. I think that's when it becomes bullying. When you go and, and you can't handle yourself. And there's some situations where that, that comes into play where somebody needs to step in. But, you know, don't walk away from problems. Don't, 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 don't ever quit. Well, where I are the think coaches? That's something that we got to go and stand up for. Where's Coach Philbin on this? If it got this know. bad, Tony, that's a, that's a good question. You got his number. I'd love to call him and ask him. Hey, what, what, you know, we're not just him. Where, where's the whole? You know, nobody saw this. Nobody, well, they saw, saw it. This was a problem. They hey, look. You know where hazing happens. It doesn't happen in isolated corners in a in a facility. It happens in the locker Absolutely room. Absolutely not. Right. Everybody sees Every, it. Everybody deals with it. And and no one no one's exempt from it either. Nobody, not trainers, not not, man, not not guys in the front office, everybody. When you walk in that locker room, it's a different world where you better have thick skin because if you're wearing, you know, uh, floods, people are going to go and rip you about, you know, what you're wearing. I mean, it's just a, it's an ongoing thing that guys go and harass each other, and, and then you get up and you go, and, and, you, and you don't make let words go and, and take it over. you got to try and hold your ground. But it's not like, you know, there was a guy who beat a guy up or, or, or you know, or it was a, 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 a physical thing. We're talking about, you know, words here. Go and stand up and tell him what you think, too. It's not like he came and punched you in the face and we're talking about some violent uh, act. We're talking about words, you know what I'm saying, that we have to deal with every day. Yeah, but he threatened him. He said, I'll kill you, Goose. I mean, this this, this went above and beyond, hey, I'm going to give you grief, I'm going to poke fun, I'm going to call you soft, I'm going to try to toughen you up. The stuff that this guy said to Martin, he should be arrested for. Dan. Dan, I think that I think that people are, are taking this way too overboard. I think that if you if you want to look at it that way, then you have to look at the football field. Uh, how many simple assaults and aggravated assaults are committed inside the field that, that that every attorney in the world should go and say, "Hey, listen, you know, did this guy hit you? Uh, he clipped you in the back. Let's sue him." Yeah, but that, that, but that's part of the game. But Goose, this is off the field with teammates. This is in a working environment. It's not the right. football field where we know it's violent. I don't expect off the field in a locker room to be, have some guy say what he's going to do to me, defecate on me, calling me, you know, racist right. slurs, and he's going to threaten to kill me. That has nothing to do with listen, being on the field. What I said, listen, Richie, let me say it one more time. Rich Incognito is 100% wrong, okay? Am I saying that do, do, if a guy goes and says that to you, do, do you go and, and run? Stand your ground a little bit. I understand that's, you're defending is, the, the normal that. locker room. I This is abnormal. That's, I get, I get that's, it. Goose. That's exactly what I'm defending. No, I get I it. I get it. Okay. I, am, I, am I saying, hey, Martin is, is, listen, just be a man. 
You know, I'm, I'm just I'm just tired of people going and running from their problems. Does Martin don't face them? Does Incognito play again? I don't know. That's a that's, that's a decision for the commissioner. I mean, you know, hey, listen, he, he's got to go. And, and the problem with Incognito is it's been a, it's his track record. Okay, it's been over and over. This isn't the first time this has happened. Yeah. Okay, but you know. Is, is this an ongoing? Does he need you know some kind of uh, uh, doctor to talk to? Maybe you know, probably. Well, he's got talent. That's uh, why he might get another chance. Yeah, that's usually yeah, what happens. Listen, hey, listen, Dan. Me and you have seen it time and time again. Okay, a little bit of time, and all the fleas get to get, get 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 off your back, and all of a sudden you're back at you're back in you know back in the game. That's right. just that's just what happens because you know, you know teams teams want to win and and jobs depend on it and and mortgages depend on it and money depends on it and that's what it's uh, that's how that's what runs the world. But, a... but I think that uh, you know if, if 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 kids or your kid is looking at this and you have to go and talk to them about it, I think you don't tell them to go and run. Tell them to stand there and stand up for himself. I appreciate you joining us on short notice. No problem, man. I appreciate that. Anytime, buddy. All right, buddy. That's uh, Tony Saragusa. I think he's got uh, Bears-Lions coming up this weekend with uh, Kenny Albert and uh, Moose Johnson. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.